Ah, spring, the birds are singing, the sun is shining. Colors are visible other than white snow and gray skies. You know what that means. Close the blinds, turn up the AC, and play some Vidya. I finally have my setup 2.0 up and running. It's been three or four years of waiting, and then six months of watching prices on the market for this to happen. But I'm happy to say, I have completed the alpha version of the gaming setup of the future. The setup's core is the XPS 9370. See my review here if you haven't yet. Supplying the CPU and I.O. paired with the new Gigabyte Aorus, the Aorus 1070 gaming box. I dropped this bad boy on the desk, plugged in my power and screens, then the fateful moment came. I plugged in the included Thunderbolt 3 cable, and yikes, those LEDs are horrible. Let's turn those off. And then never use the included software again, because it's a barely working garbage pile. Ugh. Okay, let's not judge a book by its cover. I didn't buy this for pretty lights, I bought it for the performance. Moving right along. The eGPU is a big deal. Yes. It's not the first, but technically, neither was Edison when he invented the light bulb. I think that, like Edison, this GPU in a box is the real herald of a shift in its space. This is for three reasons. Power, portability, and price. The Aorus Gaming Box comes in three flavors, the 1070-1080 editions for the green team, and the RX 580 edition for red. All of these options boast VR-ready performance, and all will crush any game at 1080p, even with the 8-10% performance loss from the Thunderbolt bottleneck. My version, the 1070 edition, happily played Overwatch at 1440p with minor dips below 60fps, and pegged at 60fps minimum in 1080p. For frame junkies, the 1070 edition's sweet spot is definitely 1080p. For more demanding game loads, I ran a little of The Witcher 3. Again, I maxed settings, aside from hair works because, come on, and found great frame rates. My other load was Minecraft. Bear with me here, this isn't vanilla. I added some notable tweaks. For starters, SPAC's BDCraft 256 pixel texture pack, and of course, Sonic Ether Shaders Reborn Edition. Then I ran it at 4K and made this quick cinematics for flips and giggles. Truly, any 16-year-old's dream. Okay, but what about adulting? One neat thing about GPU-intensive things that don't require real-time rendering is the Thunderbolt bottleneck basically disappears. I ran the NiceHash GPU crypto hashing program and pulled down an estimated average profit of $2.30 per day over a week. <laughs> Obviously, you're not going to make millions, but it does speak to the raw performance of what is literally a bog-standard desktop 1080 running full tilt. On the raw performance side of things, Unigen Superposition Benchmark reported a score of 7,648 on loopback mode and 8,206 when going to an external monitor. So yes, the loopback performance loss is real. Keep that in mind. It is so tiny! It's a cool fact. The Aorus Gaming Box comes packaged not just in bubble wrap, but in a lovely carrying case with included shoulder strap. This is just another way Gigabyte showed its clear attention to portability when making this pocket rocket. The size is something to behold. It's so small they had to put custom coolers on the 1080 and RX 580 edition. The 
1070 edition, though, can squeak by with just the standard ITX version. Still, all three versions use standard PCIe connectors that should be able to run anything that A, can fit, and B, can get by with no more than a single 6 plus 2 power connector from the built-in power supply. Future-proofing for the win. My setup basically doesn't move, but I am totally taking this with me the next time I fly out to visit family. That's a big part of this whole setup. Now I can literally take my home gaming station anywhere I go. <laughs> Let's just hope the TSA doesn't freak out when they see this thing. Ooh, money! This is still on my list, despite a price that might turn many people off. The fact is, you aren't just buying a GPU here. You're buying a GPU, a power supply, and an I.O. expansion card, plus a small case. The eGPU market will always have a little overhead because of this, but most of that cost can be amortized over the hope that you can use the same enclosure with future generations of GPUs. Now, people suggest that may not be possible, but I have faith in the burgeoning eGPU community and the fact that there's been this amazing industry-wide adoption of the Thunderbolt 3 paradigm. I feel confident I will be able to keep this system moving forward for several more generations. The Aorus 1070 Edition's MSRP is $599 USD. When you consider that most 1070s are in the $350 to $400 range, that means the box itself is valued between $200 and $250. When looking at other eGPUs, that's anywhere from $50 to $300 cheaper. Now this isn't for everybody. I don't think this is going to supplant a desktop setup. At least, not yet. Still, the fact that my 13-inch Ultrabook can drive AAA titles and perform workstation tasks, then unplug, and go to class or meetings for over six hours on battery life is just incredible. I have one PC that takes my settings and environments everywhere. I get amazing portability and battery life, as well as extreme gaming performance. The future is here, baby.